We often encounter a variety of techniques used by individuals and academic bodies who are attempting to stem the flow of true historical knowledge. Indeed, many of the most controversial and compelling artifacts are often stolen, conveniently lost, or simply sold on by their original discoverer, never to be seen again. However, sometimes, these artifacts successfully make it into the public domain, photographed and studied by reliable figures, before these vanishing acts can occur. And our next artifact is no exception. Predictably, the tactic that is seemingly chosen for these particular smoking guns is for the academic and scientific worlds to simply ignore such objects as if they do not exist. Or, as with this particular upart, to dismiss it, to look away, and claim it is simply impossible. Known as the Nampa doll, it is a small figurine, confirmed beyond doubt as having once been crafted by the hands of man. It was discovered in 1889 by a group of workers who were searching for water near the town of Nampa in southwestern Idaho. They were attempting to create a well, drilling a borehole down to a depth of 295 feet, at which point they began to bring up strange cuts of clay. Amongst them was a unique projectile, a tiny clay figure in the shape of a woman. Professor Albert A. Wright of Oberlin College officiated the figure's authenticity in 1979 making academia's attempts to vanish the out-of-place figure near impossible. Quote, it was not the product of a small child or amateur, but was made by a true artist. Though badly battered by time, the doll's appearance is still distinct. It has a bulbous head, with barely discernible mouth and eyes, broad shoulders, short thick arms, and long legs. There are also faint geometric markings on the figure, which represent either clothing patterns or jewelry. They are found mostly on the chest or around the neck, arms, and wrists. The doll is the image of a person of a high civilization, artistically attired. We find his conclusion of it, being of a person of high civilization, as the most compelling, further supporting our belief that the doll is a leftover remnant of a now lost civilization. And due to academia's dismissive attitude towards the stonework, it is lost, as a result of their conspiratorial ignorance. Furthermore, and an additionally intriguing reality, is the dating of the artifact. The geological strata it was discovered amongst is known as the Glens Ferry Formation, that, according to the same entities, that deny the artifact's existence, was created approximately 2 million years ago, during the Pliocene-Pleistocene transition. Additionally, before the mass cover-up of artifacts, research, and indeed evidence from the public domain, George Frederick Wright, a geologist from the Boston Society of Natural History, also confirmed this astonishing object's authenticity. Quote, there is no ground to question the fact that this image came up in the sand pump from the depth reported. In visiting the locality in 1890, I took special pains while on the ground to compare the discoloration of the oxide upon the image with that upon the clay balls still found among the debris, and ascertained it to be as nearly identical as it is possible to be. These confirmation evidences, in connection with the very satisfactory character of the evidence, furnished by the parties who made the discovery, confirmed by Mr. G. M. Gumming of Boston, who was the superintendent of that division, and who knew all the parties, place the genuineness of the discovery, in my mind, beyond reasonable doubt." End quote. How could a figurine dated at 2 million years old, identified as having come from a technologically advanced civilization, exist. Authenticated by a number of official and highly trained individuals, if indeed there has never been another technologically advanced civilization to have flourished here upon our planet. We find the fact that academia is simply attempting to dismiss its existence, proof of their concealment of this truth making the Nampa figurine undoubtedly highly compelling. 
Hey guys, so in 1999, engineer and all around good guy, John J. Williams found something that has become a very important find, known as the Enigmalif. He was hiking in North America when he noticed something odd about a boulder lying on the ground. Upon closer inspection, John discovered that the rock appeared to have three metal prongs protruding from its center. Finding this rather odd like anyone would, John collected the rock up and took it home. Now, it must be said, John J. Williams is one of those endearing characters that is not easily fooled. Knowing, as the perceptive person that he is, that an authentic, out-of-place artifact that according to modern understanding shouldn't exist are the types of relics that regularly go missing, with many people attempting to get their hands on it. John has guarded this artifact so well, in fact, he even refuses to give away the location in which he found it. Thanks to John's protective nature, the Enigmalith, also known as the Petrodox, is still in the public arena. A device that has the undeniable aspect of an electrical component, which ended up embedded into solid granite, stone composed of quartz and feldspar with small traces of mica. Williams has received offers up to half a million dollars for the device, but he refuses to sell it. Williams stated that the artifact, however, is available to any researchers for analysis. So far, only a few individuals have taken the time, or the risk to their funding, to study the mysterious object. According to these studies, the Petrodox is not an accretion, concretion, pumice, or a fossil. It does not contain any known resins, cement, glues, adhesives, limestone, mortar, or other binding agents. In other words, this baby is an authentic bona fide rock, which a long time ago formed around the electrical component. According to geological analysis, researchers believe that the rock is at least 100,000 years old, which should be impossible when the object embedded in it is of artificial origin. The device has been compared by some researchers to an electronic XLR connector, or similar component. The artifact has a very weak magnetic attraction. Readings indicate either an open circuit or very high impedance between the pins. Williams has not allowed the object to be broken in half for analysis, but x-ray tests have shown that the artifact has a mysterious, quote, opaque internal structure in the center of the stone. Skeptics firmly state, but at a distance, that this 100,000-year-old electrical component is a manufactured hoax, but Williams does not agree and welcomes studies of it. Williams is convinced that he has found a genuine artifact that belonged to an advanced ancient civilization or an extraterrestrial race. He is willing to let researchers authenticate the artifact under certain conditions, that he is present during the analysis, and that the rock remains unharmed. Thanks to his diligence, this is a rare out-of-place artifact, which is still in the realm of public scrutiny. As always, thanks for watching guys and until next time, take care. Throughout the ages, countless reports of unexplained and baffling discoveries have been reportedly made deep within the mines of Earth. Regardless of the type of mine, or indeed its depth, it seems that these peculiar stories continue to surface, and usually only by word of mouth. Often attached to these fascinating tales, you will find stories of these artifacts being seized, destroyed, or simply reburied. We are often confronted with an apparent cover-up, vast resources and manpower being harnessed to hide these facts from the world. The motives for choosing to conceal such artifacts from the world could indeed be endless, though regardless of motive, we feel it is imperative that we continue to expose these stories to the earth if we have compelling witnesses and unmistakable evidence of a cover-up. Deep beneath the city of Donetsk, within the Rostov region of Russia, a large foundation of sandstone can be found, something known as rock shield of Carboniferous age. It is about 300 to 360 million years old and is lined with distributions of coking coals that are also of around the same age. Astonishingly, Mr. Kasatskin has discovered, upon the roof of this shaft of coal, an imprint of a chariot wheel an imprint undoubtedly made before the rock had formed around it. He also discovered another imprint a small distance further along the shaft. It must be noted that these imprints have remained buried deep within these seams of rock for many millions of years. If a scientific analysis could have been undertaken upon this artifact, 
it could have shaken our understandings of world history, just like so many other artifacts we have been made aware of, all but a few now stolen from the public domain. Upon realizing the implications of his discovery, Mr. Kasatskin, an extremely experienced foreman in ventilation and safety engineering, specializing in seismic prognosis, thankfully took several photographs of his miraculous and now concealed discovery before officially reporting it and requesting a scientific evaluation. When his boss notified the owners of the mine in the hopes of getting an analysis of the artifact with an attempt to preserve it, to his boss's surprise, they demanded he continued the work through the shaft so that it could be subsequently flooded, which is unfortunately what has occurred, making further exploration of the sites impossible. He stated that he's investigated further regarding the Western Mines history with the fellow miners there and was able to confirm the existence of the other print within that mine. It had been damaged by blast hole driving and was little mentioned, though it was indeed there. He was sometimes in this cut, he said, and got to take a good look at it. He says that he was surprised, but also somewhat afraid to admit that these objects are of artificial origin. We, on the other hand, are excited by such a premise and will keep you posted on any further developments regarding the mine. Recently, we covered the incredible reports made by a Russian known as Mr. Kasatskin, deep within a coal mine in Rostov. Dated at over 300 million years old, it is these types of finds which are often suppressed from the public. It's seen by some as an imperative task to conceal such information, and this next object is no less fascinating or controversial. Dated as being a mere 50 million years younger than our prints deep within the mine, another artifact, thankfully exposed to the world. The stone, with a mysterious apparent chip embedded within its form, was discovered accidentally by local fisherman Viktor Morozov in Labinsk, a town in Krasnodar Krai. Understandably perplexed by this marvelous find, he quietly notified local university professors regarding his intriguing discovery. After donating the stone to these said professionals, it was discovered that the strange alien object embedded within this pebble is indeed a processing microchip of a clearly unknown origin. Amazingly, it has also been found to still contain processing data, which has not yet been deciphered, which when captured and translated, could quite possibly shed light on a once existing advanced civilization here on Earth. Or more, it could also, in all possibility, give us a tiny glimpse at an ancient alien civilization who are at this time possible candidates as the creators of this advanced and very ancient chip. The team began to discuss the confusing artifact with other professionals within similar fields of study, and predictably, it was not long until debunking efforts engulfed the investigations. A number of prominent figures coming forth to passionately denounce such research being made public or indeed being undertaken, with explanations of it somehow only being a mere fossil subsequently being publicly launched, the stone catalogued as such by the majority of the trusting public. This clearly in staunch rejection of reality. The fragment of a once larger microchip contains information we are yet to extract and decipher information of clearly ancient and possibly alien origin. We just hope the specialists bestowed with the task of this important research, now convinced they have discovered that which will eventually rewrite the history books, do not discover that the object has disappeared without trace, a fate suffered by many other artifacts stumbled upon within our modern age, artifacts of an unexplained or otherworldly nature. Just who or what could have created this chip? What was its purpose? We will endeavor to keep an eye on this research. We recently came across a most curious artifact, one which has been claimed as having once been found, just like a handful of other exquisite objects we have previously shared, within a lump of ancient coal. It is a once smelted, solid iron recreation of a face whose owner could have lived an unimaginably long time ago. With the claim written by John D. Morris, Ph.D., quote, I was recently contacted by an older lady who grew up in the coal mining area of Appalachia. Her ancestors, having lived in the area for generations, 
Her now-deceased father was a miner who had once made a remarkable discovery embedded within a coal seam – a human face made from cast iron. Like most people, they had been taught that coal is far too old to contain any human artifacts. The miner was so proud and perplexed by his find, it eventually became a family heirloom and was simply named Man. As a large, heavy object, it was eventually used as an ornament, decades later becoming stored among his belongings. She distinctly remembers her father's story of its discovery and the care he had taken with this prized object, having recently rediscovered it among her father's possessions." End quote. The owner of this artifact has requested to remain anonymous and to withhold her identity. This makes the story even more appealing to us, as throughout our time researching these types of claims, and indeed artifact, we find that those who are pushing a supposed discovery, publicizing themselves while touring an object, are often in a search for a profit and recognition. Thus, as she is seemingly fearful of the artifact's disappearance, it would seem her story would align more with someone who possesses an item not only of an extraordinary, incredibly controversial age, but also has a sentimental value, one which outweighs any idea of selling the item or even risking losing it from exposing its location. How old is the so-called man? Who could have made it, pouring cast iron into a mold, resulting in an exact duplicate of the man's face in the form of a three-dimensional mask? Could we be peering at the face of an ancestor, once of incredible importance? One from a lost civilization, a lost time within our planet's history? We find such possibilities incredibly intriguing.